Hello, grade eight. So we are starting with a new chapter, chapter two called mechanical action and forces. Now this chapter, I will divide it into four parts. So this is the first part. Let's start. So the objective that is covered during this week's lecture is that you will be able to identify the mechanical effects and characteristics of a force. What is a force? Let's get to know that. In order for you to raise a bag or push a table or maybe pull a door, you have to exert mechanical action on these objects. So in order for you to raise your bag, you have to exert some kind of mechanical action on this bag. And this mechanical action can be represented by a force. Mm, this is interesting. So a force is a mechanical action exerted by one body on another body. Let's say you're trying to raise your bag. So you are exerting a force on this bag. So what is the first body? It's you. And the another body that you are exerting a force on is the bag. Okay, see how it works? So the force is a mechanical action. It is some kind of action that you exert. It happened in this example that you did exert on the bag. Okay, but it can be exerted by any body on any other uh, body. Okay, let's take an example. For example, to move a shopping cart, the boy has to exert a force on it. We all, uh, we all tried this, okay? So in order for us to actually move this cart, we have to exert some kind of force on it. We have to push it, okay? So I, or the boy here, is exerting a force on this cart so that it will move. So the first body is the boy. The second body that the force is exerted on is actually the cart. So we know now that a force is a mechanical action exerted by one body on another body. But can I actually see the force? Like how can I tell if there is a force here or not? No, you cannot see the force. But the force shows itself through its effects. Let's see, let's get to know these mechanical effects of a force, okay? We will start with the first one and you guys will guess it. So we have this boy here, he's uh, pulling a rope which is attached to a box. What will happen is that the box will move. Okay, so another example, we have this locomotive here, which is also attached to two trailers. And when the locomotive moves, the trailers will move as well. So I, I see motion in both of these examples. So a force can do what? We say a force can set a body in motion. This is the first effect. So a force can set a body in motion. You can try it at home, okay? Just put any object on a table and push it with your hand. You are setting that object in motion. You are applying a force on this object, okay? Now, the second effect, the first effect is that I was able to set uh, a body in motion. Okay, you can do it. It's simple. It's really easy. Now, what if the body was already in motion? The second effect is when the force modifies this motion, changes this motion. Let's see how. We have three cases here. The first case, let's which is this one, okay? So let's suppose that this ball was thrown to this player in this way. Now the player will kick the ball, okay? The player will change its direction. He will kick the ball, let's say, this way. So this modif what do we call this modification? Changing of what? Changing of direction. So the ball was going in a certain way and then the boy kicked it in the other way, okay? So a force can modify the motion of a moving body by changing its direction. I modified the motion. The ball was already in motion, I just modified it. Let's see this case, 
Okay, now this boy also is already in motion. He's moving on his scooter and he wants to go faster. So he went faster. What did he change? Changing its speed. So I modified also the motion by what? By changing its speed. How about this case? Okay, let's say that the ball here was kicked to this goalkeeper and he caught it. Okay, so now the ball is not moving anymore. So what did I do? I prevented its motion. It's not moving. I caught it. It's not going to fall. It's not going to continue its way. Okay, it's no longer in motion. So these are the three. These are the three ways that we can modify the motion of a moving body. Okay, so we can set a body in motion, a force can set a body in motion, and a force can modify this motion. And these are the three ways where we can modify. Modify means change, okay, where we can change this motion. And the third effect, you can see that these hands are squeezing these objects too hard. Okay, so you can see this orange is already squeezed and we have some orange juice. And we can see here this is squishy uh, object is also being uh, squeezed. So a force can do what? Is the force here setting a body in motion? Is the orange juice moving? The orange, uh, sorry, is this orange moving? No. Uh, how about, uh, is this, was this orange moving and then I modified the motion of it? Uh, did I change the speed of it or the direction or something? No, I'm changing its shape actually. So I'm applying a certain force that is able to change the shape of this orange. So I say a force can deform a body. Deform, it means changing changing shape okay so i'm changing the shape of it you can try it with a stress ball at home just squeeze it with your with your hands with your fingers and you can see that the shape of it changes so this is the third and final effect of a force so we cannot actually see the force okay we can only know that there is a force from its effects so it shows itself through its effects now that we saw the mechanical effects of a force and how a force shows itself through its effects, I need to know the characteristics of a force. Now, do you think all forces are the same? Like, uh, for example, this boy kicking this ball, he is applying a certain force on this ball, and this boy is uh, just moving this uh, cartwheel. He's also applying a force on this cartwheel. So are these two forces the same? Is every force in the universe the same? Nope, it is not. So how can I tell them apart? How can I tell that this force is different from that one? We have certain characteristics, okay? Just like any anything else like for example the difference between uh, uh you guys okay like you have different uh, hair color different eye colors different skin colors this is how maybe we can tell you apart now same thing with forces okay they have different characteristics this is how we can tell them apart this is how we can uh, get to know the force okay first First characteristic with that we are going to talk about is the point of application of the force. Point of application. It means it is the point, point where the force is applied. From its name, point of application is the point where the force is applied. Okay, so you're pushing the any object on a desk. Let's say your book. You're pushing your book on the desk, okay, or on uh, on a table, and you're pushing it with your finger. So you are applying a certain force on this book. What is the point of application? It is the point of contact between your finger and the book because without this point of contact the book will be no longer moving on the table so you are applying this force throughout this point so it's a really important point so what is the point of application in this case you can see it is it maybe here right on his hand no it's at you know the tip of his foot right here it's the point of contact between the foot and the ball okay so this is the point of contact how about in this case he's holding uh this handle of the cartwheel 
Okay, so the point of contact, the point of application is the point of contact between the hand and the cartwheel. Same thing when you push something on a table, the point of application of the force is where, uh, where you are actually applying the force. Where is it applied, okay? So yeah, it is the point where the force is applied. So the second characteristic is the line of action. From the name of it, line of action. So it's a line and there is some action on it. Okay, so it means that the force is happening on this line. Okay, so let's try the first one. This is the first case. For example, you can see that this boy is pulling a rope. Okay, and this rope is fixed to a ceiling. So the line of action here, the, where the force is applied, is actually vertical. So the line of action here is vertical. How about if I am pulling the rope here, like this, horizontally, okay? So the line of action here is horizontal, or maybe it could be like this, oblique. So I have three uh, line of actions that you should know, okay? It could be vertical, horizontal, or an oblique straight line, just like that, only these three cases. So we've got to know that a force has a point of application, a line of action, let's draw it like this, horizontal or vertical or oblique. Okay, now we're gonna get to know the direction. The direction is that little arrow that I draw at the, at the end of the line. Okay, this tells me where the force is actually going. Line of action only tells me the line on which the force is happening. The direction, it tells me where the force is going. Well, which direction? Is it upwards, maybe? Or maybe downwards? Or, I don't know, to the right? Or maybe the force is to the left? It could be upward to the left okay or it could be downward to the right or maybe upward to the right or downward to the left is this clear like the direction it tells me where the force is going okay the line of action only tells me the line on which the force is happening it only it, it can only be horizontal vertical or oblique but the direction it has to be to the right to the left upward to the right upward to the left see so yeah this is the direction of a force this is the third characteristic and the fourth characteristic is the magnitude okay so you could be having two forces having the same point of application line of action direction but yet one force is stronger than the other why is that? Because of the magnitude. Magnitude, it represents the value of the force. How much is that force, okay? So you're applying a certain force on your, uh, on your phone, but how much is actually that force that you're applying? Uh, you're pushing harder this time. How much the force is now? All this can be measured using a spring balance. Sorry. Using a spring balance. So you have, you can see these three three string balances or we can call them a dynamometer okay so this one it has uh, a certain needle that tells me what is the magnitude of the force okay so you put you apply the force here you can put your pencil case or you can just push it with your hand downwards and you will see that this needle would, will move also this is another uh, spring balance you can see that there is a certain spring inside of it we had that we have that at school so it tells you the value of the force the magnitude of the force here okay depending on the graduated uh, you know readings yeah and the other one the last one is like uh, the most advanced one is the one with uh, it's the digital one okay so it gives me the number it's very very precise so the magnitude is measured by a spring balance, or we call it a dynamometer. Its SI unit is in newtons. Okay, so it has an SI unit. So, okay, the value here, let's say 10. 10 what? It should be in 
Newtons. Okay, don't you forget that. So we finished the characteristics of a force. We have point of application, line of action, direction, and magnitude. All these characteristics will allow me to what? To actually represent the force now. I know everything about the force. I can represent it. Just like if I know everything about you, the hair, your hair color, your eyes, your eyes color, maybe your skin color, I can finally maybe like draw you, right? Same thing here. I know all the characteristics about this force. I can draw this force. We'll have a little example about the magnitude and how do we actually use the spring balance, okay? So we can see here a spring balance. Let's uh, get to know its uh, components, okay? So we have uh, some numbers here. You can see them. See the numbers? These numbers are called readings, okay? So these are the readings on a spring balance. Great. You also have something here. This is the scale. So we have a scale, which is times 0.1 newtons, and we have readings. Perfect. Now, uh, what, what all this tells us? Let's see. I need to find the magnitude of the force. We need to use a certain formula to find the magnitude of the force. Now, the magnitude of the, of the force is not 60. Okay, this is the reading. There's a certain scale for it. So I can't just use 60 and I say, this is 60 Newton. This is the magnitude. No, I need to use the formula. Magnitude equals reading times scale. Okay, so what is the reading here? The reading is 60. Great, times the scale. What is the scale? It is 0 0.1 Newtons. So 60 times 0.1, it's 6 newtons. This is the magnitude of the force. The force of what? You can see that this box, okay, it's pushing this rope uh, of the dynamometer down. Okay, so it's applying a certain force on the dynamometer, and we are measuring this force. Now, what if I have the... Um, let's say the scale and I have the magnitude of the force. Can I find the reading, for example? Or what if I have the reading and the magnitude? Can I find the scale of the dynamometer? Yes, I can. Because we can apply this triangle. I'm making it big so that it can fit what I'm going to write. So we say we have the magnitude. We have this scale and we have the reading. So if I want to find the scale, the scale would be magnitude, remember, over divided by reading. If I want to find the reading, it would be magnitude divided by the scale. Okay, and if I want to find the magnitude, which we did in the previous slide, it will be equal to scale times the reading. Okay, so this is how we can use this triangle. In case I have two out of three, I can find the third missing value. So that's it, guys. We're done with this week's lecture. If you feel like you still haven't got, you know, a hold of the idea yet, just Go over the lecture again, okay? And uh, I'll see you guys in the Zoom live. Solve the worksheet. And uh, yeah, take care and bye-bye.